Carrier screening is a type of genetic testing that analyzes DNA in a blood or saliva sample and is typically offered before or during a pregnancy. In order to better understand carrier screening options, let's start by explaining the term carrier. Genes are like instruction books that tell our bodies how to grow and how to function. We have two copies of most genes, one passed down from our mother or the egg cell, and the other copy passed down from our father or the sperm cell. Most of the time, both of these genes are working or readable by the body. Sometimes a gene can have a spelling error or a missing or extra word in its code called a mutation that does not allow it to work properly. Being a carrier for a genetic condition simply means a person has one gene copy that works and one gene copy that doesn't. A carrier is often healthy and typically has no symptoms of the condition. When a couple are carriers of the same genetic condition, also referred to as a carrier couple, they usually have a 1 in 4 or 25% chance to have a baby with the condition. This is called recessive inheritance. For outcomes in this scenario, the mother could pass on her working copy of the gene, as well as the father, which would lead to a child who does not have the condition and who is also not a carrier of the condition. The mother could pass on her working copy of the gene, and the father could pass on his non-working copy of the gene, which would lead to a child who does not have the condition and who is also a carrier, similar to the father. The mother could pass on her non-working copy of the gene, and the father could pass on his working copy of the gene, which would lead to a child who does not have the condition and who is also a carrier, similar to the mother. Lastly, both the mother and the father could pass on their non-working copies of the gene, which would lead to a child who has the condition. As you can see, there are four possible outcomes when both parents are carriers of the same recessive condition. There is a 1 in 4 or 25% chance a child of the parents will inherit both non-working copies of the gene and have the condition. Carrier screening can also cover conditions that are X-linked, which can be passed from carrier mothers or the egg. Women generally have two X chromosomes, whereas men usually have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. Because a woman generally has two X chromosomes, she can have one working copy and one non-working copy of the gene on her X chromosome and be a healthy carrier. In some cases, a carrier of an X-linked condition may have some symptoms related to the condition or be more mildly affected by the condition. Because males only have one X chromosome, if they have the non-working gene copy on their X, they have the genetic condition because they do not have the second working copy of the gene. So let's rewind. A female carrier of an X-linked condition has a 1 in 2 or 50% chance to pass on the non-working copy of the gene with any pregnancy. Her sons will have a 1 in 2 or 50% chance to have the condition. This is because the mother could pass on her working copy of the gene and have a son without the condition. Or the mother could pass on her non-working copy of the gene and have a son with the condition. Her daughters will have a 1 in 2 or 50% chance to also be carriers of the condition. This is because the mother could pass on her working copy of the gene and have a daughter who is a non-carrier. Or the mother could pass on her non-working copy of the gene and have a daughter who is also a carrier. It is important to remember that all of us are likely carriers for a few genetic conditions, but most people do not know what they are carriers of, as there often isn't a family history of the condition, and usually carriers of recessive and X-linked conditions are healthy. Further, it is rare for a couple to be a carrier of the same condition. There are many different options for carrier screening depending on how much information an individual or couple would like to have. 
Certain conditions can be more common in certain populations, and risk to be a carrier couple may be higher if a couple shares close relatives. A couple may be a carrier for the same genetic condition, even if they have very different ancestries or backgrounds, just by chance alone. Examples of some of the conditions that can be screened for include cystic fibrosis, spinal muscular atrophy, and sickle cell disease. You can learn more about these conditions in our patient library by visiting www.geneticsupport.org. While one can screen their carrier status for individual conditions like those previously mentioned, there are also expanded carrier screening panels that can assess carrier status for a larger number of conditions. The conditions included on many expanded panels can vary, but typically include conditions associated with an increased chance for birth defects, neurodevelopmental disability, shortened life expectancy, or other health concerns. Symptoms for conditions can vary widely between people, and treatment options may or may not be available. As you can imagine, the more conditions screened, the higher the likelihood will be of getting identified as a carrier of one or more conditions. Results of carrier screening can be positive, meaning a person carries one or more conditions, or negative, meaning a person has a lower chance to carry the condition or conditions screened for. In some instances, results may not be as straightforward as positive or negative, and may change over time as more is learned. Carrier screening can be completed for a couple at the same time. But it typically starts with one person, and further carrier screening is offered based upon their results. Results generally take about two to three weeks to get back and are usually disclosed to the individual or couple by telephone by the ordering provider, such as a genetic counselor. As mentioned earlier in this video, being a carrier rarely raises health concerns for an individual. And most often, risk for the condition is only increased for children when a couple carries the same condition. If there is an increased risk identified for one of these conditions during a pregnancy, such as both members of the couple are identified as carriers of the same genetic condition, the only way to know if the baby has that condition before delivery is to undergo a prenatal diagnostic test, such as chorionic villus sampling procedure or an amniocentesis. These tests have a risk of a complication, such as miscarriage, of less than 1%. Diagnostic tests are always optional. Another option would be to have the child tested after delivery, or if known prior to the pregnancy, there may be options to test embryos for the condition following in vitro fertilization. There are some key limitations of carrier screening to keep in mind. As mentioned earlier, if carrier screening returns negative, the chance to be a carrier is much smaller, but never zero. No carrier screen is perfect, and no carrier screen can test for every genetic condition. A common question that is asked is, are there any risks if I choose to complete carrier screening? In rare cases, being a carrier of a certain condition could provide you with information that might impact your present or future health. For some, the results of carrier screening can raise more questions than answers. For instance, if a woman finds out she is a carrier of a recessive condition during pregnancy and screening cannot be completed for the father of the pregnancy, her results could cause anxiety and extra stress because the actual risk to the pregnancy will remain unknown without the father's results. In addition, genetic conditions can be extremely variable, and for a carrier couple, it is impossible to predict how exactly the condition will impact a future child. This uncertainty may lead to heightened stress or anxiety for some families. There are many different types of carrier screening choices available today. It may be helpful to talk with a genetic counselor or your healthcare provider as you consider your options. Your decision about carrier screening may be different than the choices made by a friend or neighbor, and that's okay. Whether or not to do carrier screening is a choice, and the best way to make decisions that are right for you is to be informed.